Man, I was at Heroes of the Dorm, and that was one of the most exciting moments we've had yet to date in Heroes. But Corey, they are against a Titanic team. Berkeley will be facing off against none other than Cloud9. Maelstrom, that's right. They are one, I will say it, the top team in NA right now. And we can see the teams right here. But let's jump into UC Berkeley's roster. Yeah, we can see these guys here. They performed so well at Heroes of the Dorm. They have that LAN experience, and that's a big deal. Yes. They've won an event with a massive crowd. We can see Zero, Fan, Panda Jigo, Ultimated, and Suppy. That's right. We need to highlight a couple players on this team. Fan plays for Cloud9 Maelstrom's sister team Cloud9 Vortex so no doubt he has a lot of experience scrimming against that team so he'll know some of their strategies and of course Suppy you guys all know him from Starcraft plays for Evil Geniuses a well-known player and he saw some really really clutch support play from him through Heroes of the Dorm yeah between ancestral healing on Rhaegar and just Brightwing play in general oh, yeah. really on point but on the opposing side we have the challengers there it is gonna be Cloud9 Maelstrom and these guys they've just played in a huge tournament WCA yeah. they've been competing since almost the beginning of the Alpha yeah, this this roster that they've had has been very, very consistent, at least over the last five months. Uh, I don't know if we can check out that roster card right now to see what players we have on there. There it is. Okay, playing for them, we have K1 Pro, King Caffeine, I Dream, Dunk Train, and Biceps. And these guys are not new to the LAN environment either. We had multiple players here competing in the BlizzCon Finals last year under a different banner, but no matter, they are well-seasoned in competitive heroes, and they are ready to defend their title as a professional team. This is just a really, really great story that we have built up between these two teams. Two pools of teams that have never been able to face off against each other, so really just the top team in the competitive scene right now up against the winners of Heroes of the Dorm. We really could not get a better match match today, honestly. But I think that these guys are ready for the draft. I think we should hop right in if we can. Let's do it. I'm ready to roll. And you know what, guys? Are you ready? Are you ready for the draft? Yeah, we need to get some excitement in here. Let's go, guys. All right, well, we do have the draft up here, and we actually do know the bands. Now, they are not displayed on the screen right. here. But, Kubi, what are the bands in this match? We have Illidan, Band Out, and Kerrigan. Oh my goodness, well we saw Fan playing Illidan right. in Heroes of the Dorm, and he was absolutely picking apart the opposing team, so that's not a big surprise, Cloud9 really respecting that hero. Yeah, absolutely, and he, if given the right opportunity, the right support, the right uh, composition stuns, he can wreak havoc, so absolutely, it's very much a respect ban, and I like to see that uh, they're really bringing the heat, they're really trying to cut out any of those top players from UC Berkeley. All right, well, the first pick is going to be K1 Pro on Jaina. Now, Jaina is a very formidable mage. She has slowing Blizzard ability. She's really a Frost mage, uh, very much like the old Warcraft games. And Brightwing is going to be the That first. is a very, very early pickup. Now, Brightwing has actually seen uh, quite a bit more play, uh, especially in the competitive meta, because you know, she's got a lot more self healing. She's a lot harder to take down. She has Cleanse. She has uh, the new promote ability uh, that's been buffed. And it's just like all around a very, very versatile healer. And uh, of course, Sylvanas, she is a of course, the Banshee Queen mm -hmm. of the Undead, and she can lock down enemy minions and structures. She can actually just disable them with her trait. Very powerful for pushing in general, and just damage she has the output. But, oh my goodness, speak of damage output. Okay. Well, <laughs> we have the two mages together, Jaina and Kael'thas. That is an insane amount of damage output between those two heroes, at range no less. But we have to highlight that these heroes really don't have a lot of mobility. Jaina gets sprint at 13, and then only until level 20 would you get the pulse of the storm. So they have to make sure that their positioning is very much on point. We see Anubarak is going to be picked up. He is one of the strongest initiators in the game. So like you mentioned, they're going to be in the back line a lot. He can burrow underground and come come up from the burrow with a stun on them. Sure. So if he can get those big plays, we'll see the mages picked off quite quickly. Yeah, multiple stuns in his kit. And yes, we have Johanna, the newest hero in the pool. I am so excited to see Johanna play. This is uh, the first competitive heroes match I have seen with Johanna, and I'm just really excited. She's an excellent uh, peeler for the backline, so she can throw down the stuns, really to keep that backline safe. And we're talking about Jaina and Kael'thas, the characters that don't have a lot of mobility. That, I think, is the perfect hero to pick up to keep that backline safe. Yeah, she is just such an exciting hero to watch in general. And King Caffeine, no matter, a lot of people will say he is actually the best warrior player in North America, yeah. if not the world. So seeing him play on Johanna is going to be a blast. Nova is the final yes. pick in this game. I am so pumped yes, for this match. Yes, we're jumping into the show match. Guys, let's get excited. Let's go. 
I am just too pumped for this. I really like that Nova pick too. We gotta talk about that. You know, jo uh, Johanna's a really, really good peeler, but right. if you don't know where the Nova is and she's able to sneak up on that back line, throw down that huge amount of burst damage that she has, it's gonna be trouble. So we're gonna have to make sure that they have good vision on that. All right, guys, well, the first battleground of the day is going to be Cursed Hollow. And we can see on the blue side, it's I Dream on Zeratul, Dung Dream playing Uther with a Lumberjack skin, K1 Pro on the Winter Veil, Jaina, Biceps playing as Kale Fossum, King Caffeine rounds out the team on Kubi's favorite, Johanna. That's right, I'm really liking the B walking, a little fun stuff. Okay, over on the right side of the map, for UC Berkeley, we have Suppy, he's going to be playing Brightwing, Zero is going to be on Anubarak, over in the middle lane, we have Ultimated on Tassadar, Panda Jigu is going to be playing Sylvanas, and rounding out the composition. Fan is going to be on Nova. This is cool. Now, you notice each team has one cloak hero. Nova and Zeratul. They can hide in the shadows, approach the enemies from afar, and we're going to see that on both ends. Now, the cool thing about Zeratul, he's going to go in, win the big damage from the mages comes out to try to finish off the kill. But right. Nova, she's going to be lurking and hunting sneakily for those squishier heroes. Yeah, both of these heroes are very, very positional based. Yes, Zeratul has the blank, and especially at 13, he gets a lot more mobility with the Wormhole talent. We're most likely to see that, but Fan has to be very, very particular about his positioning because Nova, one of the lowest HP pools in the game, and she does not have any escapes, especially until level 20. If she's caught out of position, that is going to spell trouble for Berkeley. But I have no doubt that Fan is an expert on this hero and will be able to execute. All right, well, we see Subby is using that phase shift, one of Brightwing's abilities to teleport across the map on an, a friendly ally. And he uses that to come up here to help push this lane. They're trying to just get a bit of pressure on the top lane because they notice it might be one of the mm -hmm. lanes with less defense. And we can talk about Johanna a little bit. For those of you guys who are not familiar, we just saw the Condemn ability, which is a really nice AoE pull after about a second. That ring that appears around her pulls heroes in and stuns them for a quarter second. And that is going to be a big deal for healing for heroes like we talked about earlier. Hold on a second. We have a bit of an engagement. The, the pull does not quite hit Suppy. That might have actually put him in a bit of trouble, but look how quickly she is healing back up. Yeah, we have three members each in this top lane because they have to respond to the aggression. Of course, we mentioned Sylphanas. She can lock down those minions and towers and leave that uncontested, but that is a huge pull in by Johanna, forcing out that hunting wave, and he, she will be able to get out of that situation. So scary, yes, with the Condemn, and then you follow that up with the Punish. That's an AoE swipe in front of Johanna that slows the targets for, I think, about 60%, fading over a couple seconds, and that's a really big deal and allows her to chase. She can get into the thick of things with her trait, Iron Skin, she's able to be un unstoppable for four seconds and we already have the first pick of the game for UC Berkeley over in the middle lane. Yes, ultimated, very low on HP, but still able to clear out that mid lane. Yeah, I mean, Tassadar is a very unique hero. He actually has an ability that reveals cloaked heroes like Zeratul. Mm -hmm. So we can use that ability, Oracle, his trait, to find the hidden hero and dish out the damage to remove him. And he did succeed in getting the first takedown of the game. Okay, now over in the bottom lane, we haven't talked about this matchup a little bit, but Anubarak, of course, you can see all the beetles that are fighting for him. Anytime that he fires out one of his basic abilities, a beetle will spawn and push out anything near him, auto-attacking, etc. He can talent that into lifesteal, making him a very, very sustainable tank, and uh, honestly, quite difficult to tank down. All right, Kubi, but this is in fact Cursed Hollow, and right. we're at the 2 minute and 30 second mark for that. is the first tribute of the game, but we mentioned the takedown is going to be there on Nova. Okay, that's what I was talking about, though. The positioning is so, so important on Fan. If they're able to scout her out with that AoE damage and able to lock her down in place, that's going to make it very difficult for them to execute their strategy. That might be enough of an advantage for Maelstrom to take this first tribute, but it actually looks as though uh, UC Berkeley is going to get there first. Yeah, but like you mentioned, this tribute is here, and both teams are rotating down to it. If you capture the tribute by channeling for a small amount of time you will and, and you collect three of them the map will grant you a curse that will make it so the enemy team's fortifications no longer fire for a short period of time yeah that's devastating along with that the minions also drop down to one hp making it very very easy for your team to push down whatever lane you want we see a ton of strategies whether you throw all five heroes into one lane to get a huge amount of push through that lane or just split up and really try to make sure you soak that experience and just put the enemy team on the back foot. Look how much uh, push we've seen in the top lane from Sylvanas and that really just goes to show how devastating her trait can be when left on Unchecked. Yeah, it's an interesting play to do here by Cal Berkeley. They actually opted to leave two heroes in the top of the map to do that, get that push out, but the stun comes out just barely not enough. Panda Jigo has the wow. perfect timing on that haunting that wave. That was actually flawless. Of course, her haunting wave, she throws out that wave, and then whenever she wants, she can reactivate it to jump to that spot. You'll see that time and time again. And Sylvanas, yes, she's another very positionally based hero, and those types of plays will be very clutch in 
order to take down Claude Knight Maelstrom. Yeah, they have this very forward position on Uther and Kale Foster, constantly looking for someone to rotate, but Fan is here and he does have that stealth. So it is again a 3v3 in the top lane, but Fan oh. is coming from the backside. The damage is going in on the biceps, but the heal from Uther will be enough for him to stay alive. This actually, this rotation that Claude Knight Maelstrom has set up is quite scary. There's a lot of lockdown. Kale Foster, of course, has the gravity lift, the hammer of justice for Uther, and then the general peel that Johanna has, like that can make for very scary. And there's three very squishy heroes pushing in the top lane. Yes, but the second tribute has in fact spawned over at the bottom part of the map and Jaina will be able to collect it uncontested. So this is suddenly a 2-0 advantage in terms of the tribute count. And if they manage to secure that third tribute, they will curse the enemy team. Yeah, that could be very devastating. But we have to talk about this. The experience lead is in favor of UC Berkeley and oh, a little bit of push. King Caffeine is quite low. Probably still has this trade back up. That's why you see him sitting a little bit aggressive. He does get a small shield from that uh, to keep him alive. Well, Zeratul Tassadar are still remaining in the middle lane, and Brightwing is going to use that phase shift to get back into battle, going up to the top lane with Fan to continue pushing here. If they remove towers and sports, that get, gains an additional experience, forcing that team level further ahead. And really, Corey, they're looking for that level 10. That's right. That is going to be a huge power spike, and that's really where the team fighting is going to start erupting. There's so much potential that we get out of all of these heroes at level 10, and just make for devastating plays. We're going to see so much more positioning out of these teams, especially contesting the map objective. Yeah, well, there is that map objective. The third tribute has spawned, and this time Cal Berkeley does have to respond to it. Giving up a tribute this early in the game strategically isn't the best option, and there's still no level 10 on the board. But Dunk Train, the Polymorph, is going to be enough. The Invent no, 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 okay. not enough. Oh, it's so, so close to being able to survive, and that was actually a really nice aggressive play. Almost punished by Cloud9 Maelstrom. You can see some of the members trickling in just a little bit too late. This should give, actually, Fan is really, really far out of position. I Dream looking to get the final damage, and the one auto attack from Kelthos Bicep secures the kill for Cloud9 Maelstrom. Yeah, beautiful gravity lift to get that pick up. The tribute is still on the table. They've abandoned it because Ooh. they see an opportunity. That is three takedowns in this fight. I Dream blinks away at the last possible second. All while this tribute is still remaining uncontested in the bottom. I think whoever wins this little scuffle is going to be able to walk away with that. If it's called a Maelstrom, it's going to be a big deal. But level 10 has just been hit for UC Berkeley. Yes, that's going to grant them those heroic abilities, but the dive is Ooh. there. There is the precision strike and the wailing arrow, but not enough. Oh. He stays alive and the kill is there. UC Berkeley looking really strong. Pandage Eagle was still with the chase. Is he going to be able to get it? No, okay. Looks as bow Biceps is going to be able to get back over the line. But look at this aggression the confidence in the play from UC Berkeley. I am loving this. Yeah, they have a half a level lead and they did manage to pick up that third tribute of, of this game. So they do deny the curse at this point in time, but a curse will spawn again very soon Whoa. and Panajigo caught out of position. The singular yep. spike will be enough, but Zerich will also wow. fall. Wow, so many squishy heroes in this game and they are getting punished for the positioning. I really like the aggressive play from both teams. Now Fan, he's getting slowed by that water elemental and the stun. Yeah, he's going to fall and that's again the positioning and you just never know when someone is going to throw out that AOE ability. All right, Jake, I think we have maybe a bit of a low in the action. Maybe we can pull up the heroics so that we can see uh, exactly what they have gone. So, okay, so we see the Void Prison, the Divine Storm. That's an interesting pick, and it's going to be the Blessed Shield for Johanna. That's just throwing out a quick uh, skill shot ability to get a lot of stuns. Uh, Phoenix, I'm seeing Archon, Blink Heal, Blink Heal yes, uh, Precision Strike, Wailing Arrow. Okay, Precision Strike is a very interesting pickup. Uh, I think that's uh, some of the backline heroes. Yeah. But yeah, so okay, all right, let's pull that down just so we can get back to some of this action. Yes, because we do have the uh, fourth tribute of this game spawn in the yes. bottom part of the map, and the allies are starting to come to help out the team of Cal Berkeley. They want to get this, they want to deny that curse once again and stay in this game. But there is this deny by Johanna using that line uh, from behind the wall there. Yes, not as big of a power spike. Both teams are on even footing, but the positional advantage is well in the favor of UC Berkeley. They pick up their second tribute in a row, and now we're at 2-2 two to two for the tributes. The next one that spawns, whichever team grabs it, will throw down the curse on the enemy team. Just really beautiful zoning there by the Nubarak player, Zero. In the front line, just denying with his stuns. He's such a powerful hero in terms of keeping you away and initiating stuff, so constantly just keeping them out of there. But Dunk Train, he's not going to leave just yet. He wants to make sure he's in the spot lane to continue soaking experience. You, I'm very impressed with UC Berkeley's play. I know that these guys have really been grinding it out over the past day. We've seen them just training, training super hard, and it's really showing. They look like they have that synergy they need to take down Cloud9 Maelstrom, and it looks like they might be going for it. Hold on, Suppy is able to blink out with the blink kill. Really, really nice play. That's the power of Brightwing in general. She has so much mobility if you go for that heroic, and it's just so hard to lock her down, but we do see that Panda Jigu is well aware. King Caffeine is hiding in the bush, throws out that ability, and this tribute will in fact grant a curse one way or another. Whoever picks it up 
will get that advantage. That's and right. look at that Void Prison! That's a huge one. That picks up three members, and the Phoenix will be in place. The Precision Strike! Oh and they're going to pick God. up a couple of heroes. Really well played. Kalsapi just being able to escape the Condemn. But is the AoE damage going to be enough? Not quite. Ultimated, looking to escape. He's in that Archon form. Doesn't quite get the uh, Dimensional Warp off. And Pandage Eagle looks like he's also going to fall. That's a 4-0 victory for Cloud9 Maelstrom. Yeah, big plays by Dung Train actually using the stun to keep him from being able to use that Haunting Wave. He yeah. wanted to teleport to his Shadow, but wasn't capable. And we do see the first curse going inside of Cloud9, and they have taken the experience lead for the first time in this game. That's right, and with taking all of those kills, they were already set up to start taking down some of these structures. They're going to get a nice lead, and this is going to net them quite a bit more experience. So, you see Berkeley falling behind a little bit, but they had such a solid early game. I have no doubt that they will be able to recompose themselves and get back into this game. And we can even see they have those mercenaries pushing in the middle of the map. The full hearth coming out from multiple members that want to go back to base, make sure their mana is nice and full for the next push, and I think they might be posturing for a boss in a little bit. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Still, though, for a 10-minute tribute in this game, I have to say, UC Berkeley is defending very well. If they only end up losing the one fort, that's not all that bad. Yeah, but I Dream gonna remove those giants. We do see the curse is still active. Those minions have very little HP, but in 20 seconds, that will finally fade. And Bruisers have been picked up just below here uh, by Cal Berkeley, getting some more map presence. Yep. Jake, you mentioned the possibility that Cloud9 Maelstrom might be taking their golem. It looks as though they will in the lower left. If UC Berkeley gets wind of this, they might try to take their own, but actually the timing of it, this might allow Cloud9 Maelstrom to rotate up and contest the top right golem. That is, that's exactly what they're doing. We see they're all leaving, just making sure Dunk captures that. The golem will march down the bottom lane, and this is something that Cal Berkeley does have to respond to. But like you mentioned, they're already starting on their own, and we're going to see if Cloud9 is capable of getting there in time, because this guy is going to hit so very hard in yeah. the bottom. UC Berkeley, they're, they're catching wind of this. They know that it's too risky at this point. Of course, Brightwing in the bottom lane is able to face shift up at any point. You can see that Maelstrom realizes the potential of this, and they're actually going to go for it with two of the heroes split down in the bottom lane. They know they have the opportunity to do this. Yes, Brightwing is mobile, but Nova would take so much time to get up there, and this will allow Maelstrom to take the second goal of the game. This is a pretty big momentum swing for uh, C9 because grabbing that first goal, now grabbing another, it just gives them so much presence on the map, and the top four has already fallen to that first pu curse push that they had. Right, that's going to require a full response from UC Berkeley. Still, though, things aren't uh, too bad. They're about, they're pretty close on levels. They just need to wait out, make sure that they match up with that level 16, and then they can start looking to take a fight. All right, well, we can see that the deny is there from zero, just trying to keep them back for a little bit so he can buy some time for the team to respond to that top golem. He does hit very hard, and without the full team there, it's going to be hard to eliminate him quickly. Yeah, we have the golem pushing in the top lane, and the members of Cloud9 Maelstrom are pushing in the bottom lane. It's a really smart strategy. They know that they have uh, UC Berkeley forced to respond to that top golem, and they can push elsewhere, just really making use of the full advantage in the map. Suppy now actually is forced to use his phase shift, and he will be able to get out of there in time. That's a big deal, because basically they just denied soaking in that bottom lane. Soaking is, of course, just staying around the minions as they fall to gain experience for your team and level up. But both teams do have 16 at this point in time, so it's still quite even in this match. Look at that, Joanna caught by three heroes, still able to walk away. She's pretty good at just, uh, you know, making herself unstoppable with that iron skin and just getting out of ridiculous situations. It's really the strength of the hero. Yeah, she is so very hard to take down, but this bottom fort looks like it is going to fall. Biceps in the front line with Dung Train, but no, the shielding from Tassadar is going to be enough to dissuade them from this push. And we see actually a couple members of Cloud9 Maelstrom were thinking about rotating around from the top side. They do have control of that watchtower, and King Caffeine, if you can get Johanna in position behind the enemy team, this might be the opportunity they take to initiate. No, it looks as though they're sort of second-guessing their, uh, their position here, but it, it is a cool strategy. I really like that idea. If you can get the flank with her, she's so, so scary. Because what does she lack? She lacks mobility especially when she has the Blessed Shield pickup. While the damage is coming in, Brightwing is forced to face shift down, and the Precision Strike will be a lot of damage, but not quite enough to take out Fan. Fan is backing up. We see Cal Berkeley is moving forward. The stun on both Biceps and K1 Pro coming out from Uther. The heals that goes trying to keep them alive, but the Archon in the front, the shit, the shield and ultimated, staying alive, but wow. no, the Flame Strike removes him from the battle. The Ghost of Uther was able to keep those two backline heroes up in time, and we saw the potential setup for that Wombo combo, right? They're throwing down the Blessed shield and then they're using divine storm to lock down into the prison precision strike but the divine uh, storm wasn't quite able to hit some of the targets and that's what really allowed uc berkeley to turn that initiation around still a three for two advantage for maelstrom in that fight so really well played from both teams yeah but look at this even though they don't have a curse they have so much push potential with sylvanas oh, and now there they is do. the curse nova picked it up in the top using her stealth to get up there and this is going to be the first curse of the game on the side of cal berkeley
That's right, and it looks as though Maelstrom looking to just take their, their bruisers uh, to try to contest and alleviate some of this pressure. But uh, I have to say, Berkeley is looking strong, and they're bringing it back in this late game. Yeah, we can see the takedowns is 8 to 10 in favor of Cloud9, very close in this game, and they're starting to work on these Giants. Picking those mercenary camps, having them push the lanes for you really helps you have that map control, especially when you already have a curse active. Yeah. It's just going to re force responses out of Cloud9 and Maelstrom all over the place. Look at their positioning and base. They're all pushed really far back, which is a far cry from what we saw, you know, four or five levels ago, where they looked so dominant, they were pushing out with those double golems, just to show you that comebacks are very possible in Heroes of the Storm. Yeah, mercenary camps across the map. Giants here for Cloud9. Bruisers on the side of Cal Berkeley. And really, they're just continuing to push forward in experience. Very close at this point in time. And they're really just trying to feel each other out as this curse will be dissipating in about five seconds. Look at this. Look how scary this setup is they have with these mercenary camps pushing in the middle lane, the bottom lane. We see some of the members are rotating up to the top side. They want to contest that watchtower. And really, this is just pressure all over the place from UC Berkeley. Yeah, well, we can see the positioning here on Berkeley, like you mentioned. They are very much on the side, on the blue side of the map. They're getting aggressive. They're looking to make plays. They're confident after that last team fight because it was so convincing in their favor. Yes, absolutely. And, and they know that they can battle against this. And once you take a team fight like that, especially against a team like Claude and Maelstrom, it's such a confidence booster. And that really is what's going to allow them to push forward. They're so close in levels. Right now, it's about sort of a big battle to get to level 20. You get those storm talents. And those are a huge, huge power spike. Look at that fan just sort of poking at Johan. Just saying, hey, I need you to respect me here. You don't have the, you know, initiation to jump in. I realize that you're a peel hero, and uh, we're going to make sure that you know my presence is here. All right, well, they are well aware of King Caffeine's favorite hiding spot because they found him there a few times. But Brightwing is going to have to use that blink heal to get out of that situation. Yes, the shield glare just being thrown down. It's a nice ranged ability that Johanna has, and she can even talent it into heals at level 16, which gives her so much sustain. All right, but we can see that ignite on the flamethrower picked up by Kale Boss. When he uses the flame strike from far away, it's going to apply the living bomb ability, which will then explode briefly after. And if you're clumped up, it does massive damage to your team. That's right. I'm sort of noticing the posturing that Maelstrom is putting out. They're sort of going in and poking a lot at Suppy. I think that they've sort of isolated him as the, uh, you know, the keystone to the team. And if they can pull him out early in a fight, that will do so much for them in terms of getting control. Yeah, but really when it comes to the lockdown, they only have the stun on Uther and the gravity lift of Kale Foss with that blink heal. Suppy is going to be very hard to lock down, and he is well aware that he is their target. That's right. Now, so much uh, back and forth between these two teams, and I think that they're really respecting each other. They can't, I mean, so many of the fights have gone back and forth for either side, and I think they really just want to wait till level 20. There might be about a half level timing window for Kane Maelstrom to pick a fight when they have those storm talents. And look, we have another tribute spotting. Yeah, at this point in time, the tribute count has been reset because both teams have has exactly three, giving them each a curse. So this is kind of resetting the board in that in that ma manner, but level 20 is on the board for Cloud9. That's right, and got, they have the position, they have multiple heroes down there, I think, uh, especially with level 20, like you mentioned, a cute little precision strike. Uh, really cu uh, cool to just sort of uh, stall out that tribute, but it doesn't look as though they will be able to contest it. Not a super important one, and I actually really like this play. They realize they have a couple members down trying to take that tribute. They're going to respond with the golem. Oh, no, they're actually backing up. They're not really feeling too confident. They just hit level 20, so they might be able to take it. But if it's underneath the golem, there's a lot of AoE and stuns that could really turn things sour for UC Berkeley. Yeah, the golem is the most powerful minion on the map when it comes down to it. He has a root ability that he throws on the ground and a stomp. And like you mentioned, if you're caught and you're picked in a team fight where you're in a bad position, it could be devastating, especially when you consider King Caffeine on Johanna could pull you into that stomp that we just saw there. This is really interesting. King Caffeine, they realize that he's actually uh, out of position. They do have the scouting drone out there. Uh, hasn't noticed it yet, so I think this might be an opportunity for UC Berkeley to try to pick off some of the members of Cloud Name Maelstrom until he returns to his team. While well, he is rotating back down through the middle of the map to regroup, recuperate with his team, and they are actually starting on the boss, it looks like, but the Giants have been picked up here by Cal Berkeley. Just very passive, very defensive play, because yeah. both teams really respect each yeah, other right now. So much respect going back and forth, and we can look to the map objective to really force some of these fights. We just have one popping up right now. Cloud9 Maelstrom is in the lead, 1-0, to zero. and again, if you catch those three, that's going to do so much for either team to try to take down the key fortifications. Yes, but like you mentioned, they are really posturing. Nova just throwing out her combo, dishing out as much damage as she can. She'll return to the shadows, but the Void Prison locking her down. This could be a big setup 
for a Cloud9. Oh. We see the Phoenix of Precision Strike as a response, but there is no, he's not going to be eliminated. That level 20 bolt goes out. The stun coming down onto Biceps, but no, he's going to be able to rotate back. I Dream is getting very low. The Burrow Charge is going to be enough. Dunk Train getting hit by that Archon. An aggressive Haunting Wave out of Sylvanas. That is going to be three for nothing at this point in time. And will Johanna fall? I think so, Kubi. Yeah, that's right. King Caffeine looks like it's going to go down. Uther does have the redemption, but he's back up. And it looks as though he will be able to be taken down too. King Caffeine is in a really bad spot. This could be a huge fight for UC Berkeley. I can't believe it. This is, I mean, he's buying a lot of time right now. And this is actually just to make sure the other heroes can respawn. But as long as King Caffeine is alive, they're not pushing. Yeah. And this is very favorable for Cloud9. But no, he will end up falling. That is just a testament to how long Joanna can stay alive. Really awesome play. We saw the uh, the counter precision strike to that Void Prison play. And just really, really nice play from Zero. He's able to catch three members in that Burrow Charge, locking down that back line with the Locust Swarm. So much damage output, and it just really put Cloud9 Maelstrom into a frenzy. This is a huge timing window for them to push out. Cal Berkeley is playing absolutely phenomenally. They have a takedown advantage on one of the best pro teams in the world. This is a collegiate team. They won Heroes of the Dorm, and this is why they are absolutely That's phenomenal right. at this game. Can't let that title fool you, though. These guys, I said it before, they are practicing so much, and they really want to show that the collegiate scene is very strong, and I think if they're able to take this win today, that would absolutely prove that. All right, well, we can see that the aggressive golem was picked up on the side of Cal Berkeley. This is forcing Cloud9 to respond to this, and guess what Berkeley's doing? They're working on the other golem on the other side of the map. Yeah, they had a, a four hero advantage, and you know they were able to take out the golem, so you can see they really want to make sure they're taking their time with pushing out. You know, it's very possible that they could, you know, if they were a more aggressive team, they could have pushed out and taken one of the keeps, but they're playing it safe. They're making sure they take the golems, cleaning up every single map objective, making sure that Maelstrom, when they all respond, there's nothing left for them to take. Really, really nicely done, but a tribute is on the board. One to one right now. Three, again, will grant you a curse, but this one, you still want to contest it. You still want to put every effort in, and Cloud9 is getting aggressive. A huge haunting wave comes up, but that is for a disengage. They were worried from this aggression. Yeah, we have the water ML to actually kind of locking ultimate it down. He's taking quite a bit, and Brightwing is going to be able to phase shift onto him to get the heals. We saw the preemptive silence thrown out, which can be used as a very big initiator, and it played a lot of roles uh, in terms of turning some of those fights for UC Berkeley. So maybe this is a timing window for Cloud9 Maelstrom to really push in. The water elemental is down, but I I think probably the silence is a bigger part uh, of how these team fights are going to develop. Yeah, but they do have to respond to this boss as much as they would like to take that fight with the Wheeling Arrow being on cooldown. This boss is marching in, knocking on their door, and this is their last fortification in the top lane. It's the keep. Absolutely. Okay, so this is going to put a little bit more pressure on Maelstrom when the next tribute pops up. They just reached two. Again, if they hit that third one, that's going to be so much pushing power for them to try to take out some of those keeps. When you take out the keeps, you get catapult spawning in those lanes. And honestly, that is a huge amount of push power. It forces the other team to respond constantly. Yeah, the minions will be able to defend it for the time being, but it is definitely exposed at this point in time. And that's why we see this aggressive posture in the top part of the map by Cal Berkeley. Mm. They're looking for a gank, and Johanna oh, is going to be caught out of position but again, she is very hard to eliminate. Just walks up. I love it. He probably knew the Watchtower is down. He's a pro player. He knows that they're all sitting up there, and he doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> he has the iron skin. He knows that he can walk out of any of those situations. Really just a testament to how strong of a hero Johanna is. Yeah, she's a really cool hero because her damage output is actually quite small, oh, yeah. but her, her survivability is probably the highest in the game. But the Burrow Charge initiation oh. is going in, and they will remove Zeratul very early in this fight. They are on fire right now, Kubi. Yes, absolutely, and that's a huge part of how Maelstrom has been been setting up a lot of the fights. They've been looking for some of the squishier targets, throwing down the Void Prison, and then having Dunk Train follow in with the Divine Storm. And that's right? two curse in a row! Yeah, two curse in a row. They're going to be able to push in very, uh, put a lot of pressure onto one of these keeps, if not take it outright. Yeah, and the top lane is also already exposed. We just saw the Golem welling away there. It's getting quite low. Those minions only have one health. They just melt away. But the bottom, that's where the pressure is from Cal Berkeley, and they're just pushing in very slowly, very carefully, because they yeah. don't want to throw their advantage away. Yeah, we talked about this. Joanna's not really the greatest of initiators, so they've been relying on that Void Prison to set up good plays for Joanna to walk in and get those stuns. With Zeratul down, I think this gives a huge opportunity for UC Berkeley to push in. That keep is getting very low, Kubi. It looks like it is going to go down, and, and that will grant them catapults for the rest of the game. And the Precision Strike is coming out. It gets two heroes on the side of Cal Berkeley, but in the Cloud9, they're trying to defend, getting very low, pulling them in with Johanna. King Caffeine does have the sustain, but they are backing out. Okay, we saw, we saw a bit of a trade, actually. Uh, a little bit in favor of Kanae Maelstrom. Zeratul is back up. So the initiation is there if they need it. Throwing down 
The uh, scouting drone just want to make sure they keep tabs on this. The fort, I mean, the keep, excuse me, is down. So like I said, that's going to be catapult spawning that lane. A lot of pressure. So yeah, a small win for Kane Maelstrom, but UC Berkeley still has a, a very tight grip oh on the map. Oh my goodness. Look at the health oh, on that keep too, Kubi. The push from those minions was just barely not enough as I Dream on Zero 2 was able to defend, but there are bruisers in the middle of the map and the map control is still in favor. It's all red right now. Berkeley is yeah. just painting that picture. They, they really just want to make sure that they keep that map control in leave Cloud9 Maelstrom no options in the map. Look at this, even though they have a hero advantage right now, they're still pushed back to their side of the map. They don't feel comfortable moving out because there's no objectives for them to, uh, to really make it worth it. I am actually just so impressed with their play right now. Berkeley is playing phenomenally, showing that they are the kings of the dorm, and maybe the kings of the storm. Ooh, I like it. And, uh, okay, so it looks as though all the heroes are back up, and, you know, I gotta point this out, there is the kill advantage, 15 to 12 for UC Berkeley. I just love the synergy that they have, and they really, you can you can tell, they've been practicing a ton, and all their fights, oh, okay, Void Prison has been thrown down onto Fan and ultimated some squishy targets. This is gonna be a big combo, could be the damage, is coming out onto Nova and she is eliminated very quickly. We have Johanna in the front line. The stun onto a Nuba Rack will pick up another takedown. That's two for nothing for Cloud9, and they are not done yet. Yeah, so many of their members are still at very, very high HP. Cal ultimated is out of position and he just is able to pop the Archon, but doesn't get the shield in the last second. That's three kills for Cloud9 Maelstrom. They are going to push in hard and likely take this keep. 50 seconds on yeah. those timers right now before they are back alive. And we do have Cloud9 marching in. Look at the damage output on this keep. It's falling so oh, fast. I don't know if they're going to be able to defend this core. We do have Suffy. He's supporting back, but that's two heroes to defend against five. This is going to be a very, very difficult defense. And it looks as though, oh, he's able to blink out in time. Panajigu with a really, really nice escape. But I don't know if it's going to matter, Jake. Cloud9 Maelstrom is pushing in onto the core. Yeah, the shields are gone. It's already down to 80% in terms of that health. Pool and Cloud9 is just focusing it, ignoring Sylvanas, ignoring Brightwing. Actually, they turn around to remove Brightwing. The gravity list on Sylvanas, that is going to be an ace. No, the heels are there. <laughs> He's able to get out in time. The blood That's for blood, it. very much on point. And Cloud9 Maelstrom is able to take a really, really close game. Gotta give credit to UC Berkeley. They look so, so strong. What a close match. I can't believe it, Kubi. I mean, seriously, very evenly matched oh, yeah. teams in that game. Congrats to Cloud9 on their victory. Yeah, I gotta say, and this was, you know, UC Berkeley, they were the underdogs for this, and they really brought the heat. What were the kills? 15 to 16 at the end? Yes. And the game, really, any of those fights at the end could have completely turned it for one team or the other. I thought that was really, really well played from both teams. All right, so let's break down some of that matchup. There was a yeah. lot of focus on eliminating Brightwing as often as they could, but we saw how resilient Snuffy was, using Blink Heal to constantly yeah. get out of there, even polymorphing and face shifting to get out of a bad situation. It just really shows the utility that Brightwing has, and the, the Void Present is a very, very scary thing. Like, you can get that thrown down and it's an instant cast. So, super difficult to dodge. But again, I think it was very preemptive that they grabbed uh, the blink heal because they realized that this was going to be Brightwing the target. Right. And they wanted to make sure that they could get her out away from those combos. And it was scary. They had Johanna in there with the Divine Storm as well, like following that up. Ugh, are you serious? <laughs> like, how do you get away from that? <laughs> so let's talk about that last fight, because you mentioned Void Prison, and it was yeah. a big part of it. Explain what really happened in that battle. Yeah, and so the Void Prison was a very, very nice setup, but what it really did was sort of uh, isolate a lot of the members out of position, and the big thing that I think happened in that fight is that they were actually able to take out a Nubrak quite quickly, and we saw some of the fights that really turned the favor for UC Berkeley earlier in the match was actually just that, burrowing in, past getting to the back line and eliminating some of those, or at least putting the pressure on them, but if you take out the Anubarak really quickly, the Initiator, and then you have to clean up this Void Prison mess, just didn't pan out for them. So that's actually one of the cooler things about Heroes of the Storm is the fact that there are multiple heroic options. Yeah. With Uther specifically, you can grab Divine Shield, which is basically in vulnerability for six seconds, and Divine Storm in AoE stun. Divine Storm is actually what allowed them to lock down a new barrack and ultimately yeah. pick up that takedown. So I think it's a really big play by Dunk Train to pick up that heroic there. Yeah, that was super cool. And we actually haven't really seen a whole lot of Divine Storm as of late. It's been primarily Divine Shield just to try to make sure that they can uh, keep those squishier targets alive, maybe Maybe some of the, the melee attackers, etc. But, Jake, what did you think of the Johanna play? Oh man, it was on point. She just would never fall. She bought so much time, time and time again.